Hello and welcome to another teaching by 119 Ministries. Our ministry teaches that the whole Bible is still true and directly relevant in our lives. If you would like to know more on what we believe and teach, please visit us at testeverything.net. We hope that you enjoy studying and testing the following teaching. Unfortunately, the word faith is one of the most commonly misunderstood words in the Bible. Even in the English language, the word faith is used in so many ways that it really carries a very subjective understanding. In a lot of ways, it can be difficult to make sense of the word. When attempting to define biblical words, it makes sense to determine how our Creator originally gave us the word in the language He chose to use. The word for faith in Hebrew is emunah. It is often translated as faithfulness, steadiness, or trustworthiness. We see the first occurrence in Exodus 17. But Moses' hands grew weary, so they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it, while Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on one side and the other on the other side. So his hands were steady, emunah, until the going down of the sun. And then we see it in Deuteronomy. The rock, his work, is perfect, for all his ways are justice, a God of faithfulness and without iniquity. Just and upright is he. The word emunah is linguistically rooted in the Hebrew word amon, meaning secure or firm. This word is used in Isaiah chapter 22, verse 23, for a nail that is fastened to a secure place. And I will fasten him like a peg in a secure place and he will become a throne of honor to his father's house. Isaiah 7, 9 uses Ammon in an interesting way, three times in one sentence, demonstrating the linkage between firmness and faith. Isaiah 7, 9, If you are not firm, Ammon, in faith, Ammon, you will not be firm, Ammon, at all. The word for craftsman is Amun, and is also linguistically rooted in the Hebrew word for faith. Emuna. A craftsman is so secure and firm in his knowledge or skill that he demonstrates that knowledge or skill by what he does. Perhaps now you can see how that is fitting with the biblical definition of faith. In modern theology, faith is loosely attached to hope or knowledge, or hope based on knowledge. This definition is merely a mental exercise and is not attached to any real change in behavior. Real biblical faith is one is so secure and firm in what he understands as truth that he practices that truth. That is why James said the following, James chapter 2, But someone will say, You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one. You do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want to be shown, you foolish person, that faith apart from works is useless? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works, and faith was completed by his works. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness. And he was called a friend of God. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. And in the same way, was not also Rahab, the prostitute, justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out by another way? For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. In this, James was discerning the difference between the Greek understanding of faith and the Hebraic understanding of faith, something that many still struggle with today. In this, James is not teaching that our works saves us, but simply iterating that true faith in the Word of God will be evidenced by those who desire to practice the Word of God and then do the Word of God. This is why our Messiah said, You shall know them by their fruits. Those in the faith will do the work set forth by our Creator as outlined in the Word. John said something similar. John starts off here by reminding us that our sins are covered should we sin. However, those that are truly in the faith will live a lifestyle or walk that resembles the Word of God. 1 John 2 My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Yeshua HaMashiach, the righteous. He is a propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, 
but also the sins of the whole world. And by this we know that we have come to know him, if we keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, in him truly the love of God is perfected. By this we may know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. All of this understanding of faith is rooted in the Torah. Paul took note of this in Romans 10.6, in which he said, But their righteousness based on faith says, and then he proceeds to quote Deuteronomy 30 to define the righteousness that comes from our faith. So since Paul quotes Deuteronomy 30, we should perhaps read it to understand this righteousness. For this commandment that I command you today is not too hard for you, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that you should say, Who will ascend into heaven for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it? Neither is it beyond the sea, so that you should say, Who will go over the sea for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart, so that you can do it. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil, if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you today, by loving the Lord your God, by walking in His ways, and by keeping His commandments and His statutes and His rules. So according to Paul, the righteousness of faith is rooted in obeying the commandments. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you today, by loving the Lord your God, by walking in His ways, and by keeping His commandments and His statutes and His rules. Again, this is not to say that our obedience saves us. Our firm faith in the Word of God leads to our salvation by His grace. However, our firm faith, if true faith, also yields obedience to our Creator's instructions. Faith is seen. It is evidenced by our behavior. If we have faith, then those around us should see the Word of God in our actions. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is not what is hoped for. Faith, according to the author of Hebrews, is not the thing which is not seen. It is not invisible. It is certainly not blind. It is something that we are trying to get. Faith is the substance and the evidence. It is through our faith that the law of God should become established and a part of our daily lives. Romans chapter 3. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid, yea, we established the law. We hope that this teaching has blessed you. And remember, continue to test everything. Shalom.
119 Ministries is now available in Roku, Apple TV, Google TV, Xbox Live, and more. You can now access dozens of free video teachings straight from your home television in the comfort of your home. If you would like to learn more, please visit us at testeverything.net. Christmas and Easter, two days esteemed above most others and are observed by nearly one-third of the human population. Millions of believers worldwide celebrate these holidays to honor the birth, death, and resurrection of the Messiah. These festivals take many cultural forms and shapes around the world. But would you be alarmed to discover that these two seemingly innocent holidays are historically rooted in ancient occult practices which can be traced back to Babylon? Babylonian sun god worship has evolved throughout the centuries and has branched out into several major religions. Many professing believers have also adopted several of these pagan customs unaware. Even today, all throughout Catholicism and daughter denominations, there are still dozens of popular monuments and symbols that were at one time dedicated to various sun gods. What became this very same organization also instituted Christmas and Easter. Secular and Christian scholars alike all record that the Christmas tree, wreaths, boughs of holly, and mistletoe were all objects used in pagan sun god fertility rites. This, of course, begs the question, what are they doing in the homes of believers today? Discover how Mithra and the Norse Odin evolved into the imaginary saint we know today as Nicholas and how he became the key figure in the celebration of Christmas. In ancient folklore, St. Nicholas was accompanied by a dark counterpart known as the Krampus and had a striking resemblance to other false deities. The Easter Bunny and the dying of Easter eggs are also symbols of fertility connected to Ishtar, biblically referenced as the Queen of Heaven. Long before the birth of our Messiah, December 25th was a day used to celebrate the rebirth of the Sun God. All of this and more has all been justified by man for hundreds of years but when was the last time we considered what our Creator had to say regarding all of this? Do we care? Should we care? We reveal an opportunity and faith-centered challenge to worship and practice the faith as He stated He desires for all His people, not according to us, not according to men, but instead according to His way, according to His Word. That is, if you are ready to test everything. To order this two-part teaching, visit testeverything.net or watch it for free in our video section. In a world of depressing headlines and uncertainty all around us, good news is very welcome. Many have heard of the death, burial, and resurrection of our Messiah, and that is most certainly good news. But have you heard of all of the good news? Have you heard the whole gospel? There is so much more good news. Have you heard the gospel of the kingdom or the eternal gospel or even the mystery of the gospel? Learn why our Messiah had to be resurrected and see the complete biblical picture that was always intended. Prepare to be amazed and humbled by examining the gospel from the perspective of the whole Word of God. Prepare to take the gospel you have known, combined with the rest of the good news, and watch as the deeper purpose of our Creator's plan is unlocked in beautiful perfection. The time is now to experience the whole gospel and the joy of all of the good news. Watch What is the Gospel? from 119 Ministries for free online or order the two-disc DVD set at testeverything.net. For years, we've been told that Sunday is now the accepted Day of the Lord. Ministers, pastors, teachers, 
all saying the same thing. But what if they were wrong? How can the fourth commandment be disregarded by millions every week? What scriptures are used for their defenses? If the word of God truly stands forever, how can man's word dictate otherwise? What authorizes any man, church, or denomination to alter the word of God? If the Sabbath was given to man, why should one ever think that God would take it away? Are you ready to confront your faith? Are you willing to let traditions fall? Learn what has been covered by centuries of man-made doctrines. Discover the truth as revealed in the scriptures of how the Sabbath is the sign between the Father and those who pursue after His ways. The Sabbath Day from 119 Ministries.